And welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, where we're going to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else, get the shirt we come up with. This week, we're going to be talking about Zaris and releasing their take on a Steam box. Not really, but hey, it does ship with Linux, and on that topic, with Steam, they had a little award show. Kinda. Interesting choices, yeah. though. Want some hot strategy action with none of those newfangled graphics? Yep. I'll move over with Snoth. Yeah, have some competition. And ever wonder what would happen if the Abyss starred us? We've got some theories for you. The sun sets over here in Penguinland. It's about time dusk graced us with its presence. And stone soup is best uh, when the stone has been thrown at someone's head previously. Which is something you can do in some dungeon crawlers. I have no idea where I was going with that. Listen, man, don't throw <laughs> stones if you live in glass soup, okay? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Pro tips here at LGC bringing you real helpful relationship don't advice. Don't throw hey, Ven if you I'm live anywhere, ben. basically. You, know me. you love me. That is Jordan Swing. And over there talking about glass soup and his weird British ways. That is one Pedro. Mateus joined with you live. Chat Realm Dynamic helping us form. Cocaine Voltron. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Uh, you wonderful, delightful misfits of Linux gamers. Um... Before we get started, we'd like to see what is going on. Uh, these two didn't do anything this week. That's great. So we can skip over them. Go right to me. I taught myself Inkscape. <laughs> Yay. That happened. <laughs> In related news, Inkscape, uh, the UX on Inkscape can eat a bag of dicks. Um, <laughs> that said, uh, we can has like good t-shirts and stuff now. Vectors. You can make nice. my head as big as you need it to be. <laughs> on the blimp. On, on, on the LGC Hinden blimp. <laughs> it's spelled with the helium, not hydrogen. <laughs> How are things in Canadia land? Man, I just I've just been interviewing. That's all that's all I do. I job hunt and I interview. I'm I'm going stir crazy here. If you if you folks, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna pull rank here. If you know anyone who needs a kick-ass DevOps or system administrator. Send them my freaking resume, because I need work. Listen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he is not joking. I was getting ready for the food bar last night, and Paige was like, you, you need, some, need some company? I'm like, why not, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I just need something to do. <laughs> <laughs> and when he's not busy raiding Tesco's for their chicken, Pedro. Uh, they do make good chicken. Uh, no, this week I was uh, I was saddened by the fact that uh, Paladins no longer works with the Protons. Yes, because they my check. God damn it, Hi Res, you had it working for like three weeks. It wasn't hard, so do it again. This Come on. is what happens when you celebrate <laughs> accidents. It, it, it wasn't hard, so do it again. Linux Gamecast. Hey man, yeah. it, does, it doesn't have a raging clue like a horse. I mean, I mean, yeah, the, the horse's priapism is quite astounding considering the fact that it's dead. I think maybe we should give it a little award or something. It's the Steam Relax Update of the Week. Hey, man. And there were some awards. Smooth as glass <laughs> soup. The Steam Awards, they have winners. I watched that. It wasn't as cringy as mm -hmm. I was hoping because it was just like super cuts. Then they went to the dev studios and like, we want an award. Yay, thanks. It's brilliant. Couple of categories. We get game of the year, VR game of the year, labor of law, best environment, best dev, best alternate history. Oh, really? Assassin's Creed. Huh. Mm -hmm. Most fun not, with not, the machine. Not, not, not Wolfenstein. Most fun with the machine, surprisingly, not in the VR category. Um, Rocket Cars, <laughs> Linux title. I think that's really It's the we one have. and only yep. Linux title. Yeah. Deservedly so. <laughs> Here's the one. What, 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 what are you Here's, talking about? What's your three totally key? Here's the one that like I thought was like throwing the most shade is game of the year PUBG. And I was like, did, did you hear that epic? Did you hear that Fortnite PUBG? Mm -hmm. Shots fired. I mean, Fortnite's not on steam. So <laughs> good, good old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could have given it to a game that was like popular more than like less than two years ago. I mean, I mean, PUBG what, what is still the number one most played game on Steam. It has the highest concurrent average player count. Hi, so. China. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean would, would, would you rather it be like CS Danger Zone? Yep. <laughs> Lana. That was one of the nominations, but uh, it's... Uh, no, it's the... The translation, because one of the developers, they had like Brendan Green and one of the um, Korean developers of uh, PUBG, and... Um, the translation for that Korean developer, uh, 
his acceptance speech sounded a little bit defensive. It's like, oh, we promise we're listening to what you guys are asking and we will totally improve the game so you can keep and enjoy playing it. It's like, yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of criticism levered at uh, PUBG recently, hasn't there? I don't so, know. I'm, yeah. I'm always skeptical about game awards. <laughs> They're effectively useless, right? Like it's they, just they a big circle they don't jerk. Mean anything? Yeah, it it, it is 100 percent a circle jerk. Except we don't even have like oh uh, Je- drunk Jeff from Community like fucking yeah. Jeff at the game awards, <laughs> right? Like that was the best part. It's just like he's just so hammered and he stopped giving a fuck. It's like he doesn't even care at that point. It is just there, and he's going to make the most of it. That was the one saving grace for that particular game award. <laughs> yeah. What was so the game award? Moral of the story, oh, if you're going to host the game uh... awards, get shit faced beforehand. Yeah. <laughs> like the genuinely cringy. I mean, they've been bad. This this was very unoffensive. Good job, Valve, uh, putting the closed caption titles like in there so they were easy to pull so I didn't have to watch it. But I did watch mm-hmm. a little bit of it. I was kind of curious. Huh. I mean, it, it wasn't wholly offensive. And hey, man, we got at least a Linux game, Rocket League. Just yeah. the, the, the one. <laughs> the one. <laughs> the one. And uh, there was a lot one. of dick sucking going on for CDPR, which honestly I don't get. But okay. Maybe because it, it's not Epic or Discord. And they're like, yeah, well, you run that other store, but at least we can scoop our purchases from your store. <laughs> your store and implement them on our store. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works. So the moral of the story, CS, go fuck yourself. Um, Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Hey, back from the dead, Rust. You know it. Uh, Battle Royale on Linux, made with Unity, and yeah, Linux and Mac OS update. Didn't expect that. Uh, no. <laughs> face punch. Our Linux and Mac OS builds over the past eight months have been in a rough state, as in we no longer sell them on the store. Uh, good news is we've finally been able to update Unity, which, by a stroke of blind luck, I'm reading reading between the lines here. Uh, makes all the known issues now work right yeah uh updating unity solves all issues ever and you, you <laughs> here's, here's, here's the thing at this point give, given gary's let's call it less than lukewarm reception to linux i'm just uh-huh. happy that they're still they still have that one build bot producing <laughs> linux binaries one one thing i did notice though uh we were talking about firefox earlier when i go to that site there's a little pop-up on Firefox that says, this site has been compromised. Oh, uh, yeah. You might want to check if, like your, if your account has been compromised. Accounts. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> so good, good, good on you, Firefox, for letting me know about that. I'm like, well, I don't have a Rust account, so mm-hmm. <laughs> muscled off. But, Here's know. the thing. Um, Gary sent us keys himself. Yeah, uh, five of them. <laughs> that's the thing. So I was like, okay, out of obligation. But, yeah. Let's go finish this sentence first, Pedro. Um but let's take it for a spin put it on it looks a lot better i'll give it that but it, it genuinely still runs like poo can mm-hmm. i say that you know uh, <laughs> on a 2060 with a ryzen 1700 it goes anywhere between like 35 and maybe 60 on a good day this is a 1080p too ladies and gentlemen uh and i do have to think that you know unless the unity version like the next one or whatever just fixes the performance issues this is what we're going to get, because it's Face Punch, mm-hmm. man. They are the poster child for smash that export button, fam, and that's your Linux port. Hey, if it runs, it runs. Buy more. At least, uh, they. I think they did the right thing. I know a lot of people got upset when they're like, hey, man, we're no longer going to be selling the Linux version. I was like, I'd mm-hmm. rather you not sell, because we got a lot of jacked up copies of things that have Linux yes. versions. So... I also tried it with Proton because we have a Proton button. Nope. That mm-hmm. just ate poo too. Yeah. Now, at least they acknowledge that the Linux version was a thing that they have and they're, you know, doing the token effort. Uh, and like Clicking Jordan already export, mentioned, yeah, yeah uh, giving Gary's inclination just to piss on Linux from on high. It's good to see that, you know, at least they're keeping that bot up and running and it's like, oh, or, or, this or, or, or uh, at, the, at the very at the very least, no no one has bothered to shut down that one Amazon virtual machine that's running. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> it's like, oh, it, it actually successfully built with the latest version of Unity. Okay, let's put that up. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right. Talking about hipster pixels, man. Loria. It's not Moria. It's entirely different. We're not ripping off Lord of the Rings at all. Good news, everyone. 
L'Oreal <laughs> now supports Linux. Enjoy. So I didn't know what this game was. I clicked over to the store page, and it basically looks like if if you wanted to play Warcraft three, but you wanted it to look like orcs versus humans, this is <laughs> this is your game. Um, and apparently th th they they added a little thing at the bottom about multiplayer. It was not planned at all, but apparently. Surprise, surprise, people want to play multiplayer or strategy games against their friends. So mm -hmm. they are they are working on it, quote unquote. Um, you know what? I just gotta say, good work. You know, you didn't you don't have to go out of your way to support Linux. They did. Mm -hmm. And it deserves some credit. Oh yeah, man. Uh I'm with you with like Warcraft, but I, I want like WC2 action because that was my jam back in the DOS ages. I played this not out of that game. It had blips. Yeah. All games with blimps are better. Uh, I'm willing to try this, but we, we would have to get a couple of people together to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't oh, think Forever you, you Alone mode There's no multiplayer. Us. Come on, man. We can pretend. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe in the future when they do introduce it, because, yeah, it certainly looks a lot like uh, Warcraft 1 and Warcraft 2. Uh, it's just that they seem to be adding, like, hero units and some of the other stuff that made it more rts light like oh, uh, Warcraft oh, oh, 3 man. did. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Now that they're adding hero units, are we going to get, like, Dota done through the lens of, like, Warcraft 2? That would be kind of that would be kind of neat to just to look at. Uh, oh, yeah. Not necessarily to play, <laughs> but... I'm pretty sure that already exists somewhere in Itch. There's, like, an alpha for a game that's exactly pro pro that. Pro probably. <laughs> Here's what I want to... Um, on an aside, there's apparently some chess mod for Dota that is really good. You get like 35 seconds to play it, and it's multiplayer. Nice. Pro tip. Maybe we'll play around with that later. Slipstream, tell me about it. Uh, let's check it out. About controllers and key bindings. I don't know, man. Oof. Hey, we've had this game for months upon months. It's, uh, it's an app image. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it's hipster pixel racing, which Patreon on. Like, I will right, well, give it a try, you know, 100%. Gang of updates, controllers and stuff like that. I mean, it looks pretty. It's not bad. Here's my issue. This, this is, I've kept this game installed because admittedly, I want to play it bad enough to, plus it's like a meg or whatever. It's reasonably tiny. Yeah, it's really tiny. Right. Uh, speaking of tiny, it launches in a 720p. <laughs> Why don't you think it's 720? The size of mothering postage stamp on my UHD display. Mm -hmm. And that's how it be. It, it's not going to change. And every time I hear an update, uh, I'm like, okay, can I finally embiggen it? Because I can't resize the window config files. It's like, fuck off. I don't know about you. Some <laughs> dick. Uh, no. Nope. This didn't fix that. Pedro? Nope. Nope. You can either play in full screen and it's whatever the resolution of I, that I, monitor it, is. It, it, okay, how do you... Because I hit the button to make it do things and, it, and it's like, eat a bag of dicks, boy. I don't know. It just works in mate. Doesn't work here on a superior XFC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In mate, I click the full screen and it goes to full screen. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> I, I, but yeah, I no, uh, the window, up. you can't resize the window, which is annoying. It's like 720p. That's all you're getting. Yeah, or up to 720p what? to 3845, <laughs> I don't know. A large, a large part of this post is just explaining how the control subsystem works in this game. And mm -hmm. I feel like several of these, these decisions that this guy has made are a little questionable. Uh, main, main, mainly like locking. If you, if you change one of the one of the buttons, that has changed in the menu, which would get a little fucky. Uh, I will say though, at least they're using something SDL two based, so most controllers will just work. Yep. Period. There's just so good, one. Good, uh, good on you for that. Yeah. There's just one caveat with that because if you have say two Dual Shocks and you want uh, you know, to play with a friend with the other Dual Shock. Whatever bindings you have set for one of the dual shocks will replicate to the other because uh, the way that uh, he coded it, it can't uh, differentiate between the different dual shocks. Or you see, any I found a other... hack around it. That's why I use four dual shocks. So, <laughs> but but like th th this is one hundred percent the reason why you got to be like the pro PC guy and have couch multiplayer with the Xbox controller, the Steam controller, the dual shock. And like I don't know, a, a Super Nintendo controller. That's because when you, you have you three can do that friends on PC, over and you don't like two of them. That's all that is, yeah. man. <laughs> you can have one of these. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. We're we're old, and you get off our lawns. Is that a thing with the kids? Because everything's like Bluetooth, and you can pair it now. Do you just 
keep one of those with you on your persons when you're over at somebody's house and they try to give you the ganked up like second player one that's held together with the tape and you're like no, i'm good man here's i don't know this. i'm not a social that, person that, that, i don't go to other people's homes that, that's like that's like some Yu Gi Oh shit where you like you bring your deck of cards around just so that you can like duel people on the street instead of like yeah no i got my own controller for multiplayer fuck you you're not giving me the jacked up one I used to do that with Magic the Gathering. I used to carry my decks around just so if I went to people's, you know. That's why no one invites you over, Pedro. I'm saying reaction cause type thing. Here. I, I mean, yeah. I don't all, even you, live you also, in like, the country your anymore. Hair, like, so. pink and yellow and like spiked it up a bunch. And it was super weird. I'm starting to believe that she didn't voluntarily leave either with that attitude. No, they kicked him I out. Mean, it was mostly Nori, for being honest. <laughs> it's like, oh. no, we're going. Okay. Oh, you're throwing Nori <laughs> under the bus now? They kicked her out? So... <laughs> <laughs> oh, she, oh, she knows exactly what she did. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, next. you know what? So, uh, speaking of retro, we're, we're still on that. We're all still on that sauce. Dusk. Oh yes, hipster pixel heavy episode this week, and this is dusk. If you uh, don't know what dusk is, you probably haven't been on YouTube gaming channels lately. Uh, it's it's a quake style uh old school shootery type game it actually reminds me a lot with the uh like the setting and the way that the weapons are presented it actually reminded me a lot of uh, redneck rampage but it's in full 3d like you know the original quake was and it's is it, uh is it ray traced right uh, no no, 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 no ray tracing here. Oh, this is you RTX can actually, go to hell. Oh, I got it. I, you I, can I, actually I, run this one at 60 FPS on a 2060. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's available for Linux now. And like actual Linux version, not just Proton. So that's good to see. Very, very welcome. I sent wow, the developer to, an to email. call that weapon and, heavily inspired? Whatever that missile uh -huh. launcher? Yeah, hmm. No, that, 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 is the, that is the Quake, Quake rocket, rocket launcher. Quake rocket launcher, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I sent the developer an email and he sent us three keys, so there may be chairs flying at this one very soon. Listen, oh, I'm just, I'm just I'm just cheesed in the news post. They put Linux as Carl Weathers and Steve Jobs as Arnold Schwarzenegger. I am offended. Linux 100% should be Arnold. Do not relegate us to Carl Weathers status, period. No, <laughs> no, bad deaths. Okay, so if we're looking at this, it's 20 bucks. The Intruder Edition's 30 bucks. Or the Intruder Edition upgrades nine dollars. That's not really saving any. Well, all right. Yeah, you, you just cents. split the difference, right? Yeah. Uh, three years ago, so this has been in development a while. What do we need? Twelve oh four. Ninety-eight hundred GT. Yep, that that sounds mm -hmm. about right. Actually, that, that, that's a little, that's a little more than what Quake requires. So uh, Quake required notes. a Saturn. This is very important. You're the what? No, it uh, a Saturn. <laughs> You I played Quake peasant. on the Saturn. How dare you address me directly? <laughs> Remove yourself from my site. Yeah, don't go. Don't go, go. Don't go in the ruins. Is on all the system requirements though. So I think that's just their little joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh really? Fuck. Damn. I thought that was legit. I was worried there for a minute, Jordan. So, so you know, at first so did I. I'm like, is the is the ruins all jacked up? And no, oh, no, no. They're just like, oh, don't go in the ruins. <laughs> hey man, Nightwalkers don't have shit on these guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Gray, gray, gray walkers might. Uh, this is Gray Walkers Purgatory. It's an early access game. It is XCOM, but you know, post apocalyptic with like angels and devils and stuff. Um, you, you, and that that's basically that's basically it. If you look at any of the trailers, you look at all this gameplay. It is XCOM style gameplay. Um, it is coming spoon. We don't have a price on it just yet. And honestly, it looks a little, yeah, that, this is like right out of XCOM. Like, oh, you're trapped in a vat and you got freed. And so now you control these dudes. Um, it's come, it's going to be coming spoon. Apparently. I don't, I don't know. This, this sort of game is my crack, like good grid based shit. I love. So even though it's like super cheesy and I'm kind of writing it off based on like their framing device, it, it, it might just, it might be pretty good gameplay wise. I don't know. Single player. <laughs> I mean, Single it's a, it's magic and firearms with an XCOM style thing. It's Shadowrun without the orcs. So yeah, it, I'll give it a shot. I mean, I didn't hate uh, Shadowrun. I very much liked XCOM, and yeah, I, I, I didn't liked even, I didn't even hate game. Massive Chalice. I just I just got yeah. sick of like losing all my good guys because they grew old and died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this is turn based. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's why I completely zoned out. I was like, "What? What am I doing here?" Um, <laughs> wow! This is this Time is skip. not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful grid. 
Yeah. <laughs> Although hey. it is still coming soon. They, they don't even have a date and it's going to come out in early access, so take it for what or, it is. Or, or, or a price. Ho- hopefully they're not going to be charging like 30 bucks for this. Yeah. On the ground floor. Maybe they could use the strategy of charging 30 then upon release to make it like $9. I mean, <laughs> that, that, that certainly shows Strider. Mm-hmm. Yes. All Looks right. like a fun game. Looking forward to it. Coming up next, we talk about yet another NVIDIA overclocking utility, because you can't have too many of those. Just got to be able to overclock your overclocks, man. Overclocked NVIDIA beats. It's Chat Realm Appreciation Hour once again. It's uh, We haven't been doing this for 338 episodes, but whatever, it is Pedro, a Whatever, I skip episode, over this part. So. I know where it's at. Deal with it. Ha ha. Fast forward. Fair enough, but in case you don't skip this part, and hey, maybe you even helped uh, us out nope. by throwing us uh, some money on Patreon. Uh, We'd like to thank you. Very no, much. we don't. We, we just want to get in front of <laughs> your Pedro, face I and scream, you an give invoice. us money, give us money until we pass out <laughs> Oh, great! wake up in a pile of your here. money. Oh. <laughs> and, I mean, if you, if you want to contribute to the pile, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com, click the support button, all sorts of interesting links for you to click, follow through, to and enter your credit card number on, especially the Amazon ones where you can just buy stuff for you and we get a cut. That's pretty awesome. Same with the Humble Partner and the New Egg stuff. Yep. It's pretty <laughs> freaking choice. Uh, you can also become a Patreon, become a real cool. Oh, oh God, no. If we're talking <laughs> yes. about shirts now? Yes. All right. Yeah, that 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 terrifying visage <laughs> leads you to the place where you can buy some Linux Gamecast merch, including our brand new design, Hell Elks Mayonnaise. <laughs> if you get it in any color than white, it kind of ruins the joke. Not no, nope. but incorrect, incorrect. I wait. That shirt doesn't have that color. Boo! <laughs> or that one. Or this one. This one. We we we. we. <laughs> I, it's a little mustardy. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mustard mayonnaise. <laughs> Man, that, 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 that's some of the Bob ketchup, and Dave stuff. Whatever. <laughs> Any, anyways, if you want, if you want to cover your shame and advertise our shit, you can you can buy stuff from there. Um, yeah, you're, you you can even buy us some stuff or buy Ben some stuff on the Amazon wish list. Get up on Frank's fuck wall. Become one of his fuck buddies. We'll love you forever. Uh, yeah. Uh, you can also head on over patreoncom slash Gamecast. One hundred and twelve of you giving us some money every week. Uh, getting cool stuff like Discord access, show note access, uh, the ability to show up on Thursday and Friday streams, and sometime and not 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 really not really Tuesday streams. That that's Pedro only. Pedro only all the time. What the hell all are you Pedro. talking about? The past two weeks have been plenty of people, namely you two and Arthurin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just 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 only only Pedro. Uh, we got we got we got some uh, we got some Patreons. We got to thank though. We're Patreon. We got Marcin who increased his pledge. Thank you so Ooh. much. We literally cannot do any of this stuff without your support we would drop over and die I, no, i'm waiting get to it chop chop yeah, yeah that's <laughs> um that's pretty awesome keep being awesome and uh yeah we, we have shirts that's awesome I, i'm very happy about and it. hoodies and, and 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 coffee mugs again? Maybe they won't get fucked up. <laughs> this one, yeah, maybe they won't up. screw them up this time. I don't know. I, I mean, you you say that now, then, but history has led us to to reason let's, otherwise. Let's let's phrase this appropriately. Get your collective item, <laughs> collective yeah. item, right while it's hot before it gets pulled. I've ordered In- a gang of uh, that. They'll probably be like the three way like silhouette shirt. But that'll be the one shirt that I don't own because unlike Pedro, I will never wear clothing with my own face on it. I am well, an egotistical. Uh, I could probably make one with three Pedros on it and <laughs> narcissistic. Well, I, 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 I was just gonna say, like, get one just for you that replaces your face with Nicolas Cage, and then you're good. We could do that, or I could get the leggings. <laughs> oh yeah, so, some some le- legging game cast. I'll, uh, I'll see if they make my butt pop. <laughs> you got legs and it knows how to use. Listen, listen, man, we, we you need to you need to do another Rocky Horror Show with the Linux game cast leggings on. <laughs> you need to keep your fanfic away from the live streams. All I'm Legging saying. Never. All right. All right. Do let, it. Let, 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 enough chilling. Let's 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 go to the news. Speaking of, speaking of news, you can go. You can click on this story and go through our humble affiliate link to give us a cut of this. Uh, this is yes. the Paradox Interactive 2019 bundle comes with some interesting stuff. Uh, if you just pay the base, you can get Magicka 2 and Crusader Kings 2 under Linux. Uh, pay more than the average to get Age of Wonders and Europa Universalis and uh, some DLC for Crusader Kings that gives you some 
It says Old Gods, but it's nothing Cthulhu based. And if you pay about 15 bucks uh, Canadian, $12 US, uh, you get some Age of Wonders uh, DLC, some Europa Universalis DLC, and a Magicka DLC that doesn't work on Linux? Question mark? Proton, baby. I don't, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but you know what? If you're, if you're a strategy gamer, you run Linux, and you don't own any of these games, this is actually a pretty simple. I'm going to be 100% honest stuff. with you. Oh, if, yeah. you. if you do the strategy and you've you know, you run Linux and you're like, hey, I like to play games. And you've been doing that for more than 10 seconds. You already own all these games. This, I, this, this is true. This is, yeah. here's how true this is. <laughs> these are games that I typically, I just don't, I own all these games. I'm, I Neo dodged bullet on this. I was like, wait a minute. I don't think I have Magic at, oh fuck, I have Magic at 2. Why don't we play Magic at 2? That has multiplayer. Jordan has um, mentioned that a couple of times. I, I have, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, it'll, it'll never happen. Ever, ever, ever. Yeah, no, this is, I'm totally with Ben on this one. This is one of those that I'm going to pass up because I have three of the seven games, uh, if you encou- if you count the uh, the Protons, uh, and the ones I don't, yeah, they're all RTSs, so I'm good. Yeah, the, the, the only thing I care about Crusader Kings 2 is if you go to their support forum, some of those thread titles are hilarious if you don't have any context. <laughs> all right. Like how 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 do murder the Pope or my or my son keeps trying to have sex with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> On a related topic, let's talk about a non-video overclocking utility. That's smooth segue. Uh, yeah, green with envy. System utility designed to provide information, control the fans, and overclock your Nvidia card after you enter more cool bits. This is basically. The same type of joint that we talked about, I don't know if it was last week or week before, except with last none week. none of that horrible uh, QT widgetness. No, <laughs> this, this is good old-fashioned GTK, baby. You can set fan curves, you can do the voltage thing, you can do the clocks. There's even a flat pack, which Pedro will tell you about in a minute, but mm-hmm. it doesn't support the PETA drivers, like 396 or the 415, which are 418 right now. Something about bumblebees, but hey man, not the bees. I played around with it. Uh, it does have flat pack. I'm really like in a bad mood in a bad way with like flat packs and snaps right now because I've been trying to make those things work in different areas in the past week, two weeks. Not not a, not a good story. So I just compiled the damn thing. And it only took a second. It launched. It ran. And I have two video cards. I have a 980 and a 2060. It was kind of hilarious. <laughs> um, it, it gave me the 980 information. I was like, this is how, how much memory RAM you have. These are your clocks and your voltage, but your temp information, fan speed, eh, that's going to be from the 2060 because of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> and no option to point it at anything differently. So needless to say, I didn't risk trying to actually use it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe you gotta submit a feature request. Hey, some people have multiple GPUs in their system. It's amazing how I can just, you know, project my voice and sound like some Canadian asshole. Uh, right. <laughs> this, uh, no, uh, I actually tried the, uh, the flat pack thing, and uh, those flat hub servers, they're probably hosted in Middle Earth, maybe even Mordor, um, because it took forever to download this and i tried to run superposition uh while keeping it's not like middle the... earth pedro listen those bits just don't know how to swim yeah apparently I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm i'm just surprised no one called out that mordor is in middle earth <laughs> eh, i was being specific whatever um the uh apparently if you're trying to uh run say an application that uses the native drivers instead of the flat pack drivers while a flat pack application is directly pulling on those drivers to access hardware information on your gpu it doesn't work it just doesn't work the games don't start superposition doesn't start i could get the flat pack games uh i still had uh, total chaos that doom mod we talked about a while back uh i still had that installed that started just fine and i could actually see like the gpu doing this thing but if you're trying to start a game and it's pulling on the uh, flat pack runtime drivers the native drivers don't work Pedro, I didn't know about that. <laughs> why didn't you just build it from source, man? Quit acting like an Because they user. said it had a flat pack and, uh, you know, Fedora is saying, yeah, a flat pack is the shit. You go and download that you're crap the, and You're the reason work. free candy vans work. 
Wait, uh, I'll give card? it a try once, <laughs> and it failed on me. So fuck you, flat packs. <laughs> Jordan has nothing to say about this, but he's going to tell us about Pioneer. Oh, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will. <laughs> Pioneer is a game, sort of like uh, that old Wing Commander Privateer, which got really confusing. Um, yeah, so there was there's a big post. This this entire website is based uh, is based around like um, space exploration games, and they have one that they're developing for called Pioneer. Um, it definitely runs. Um, I tried I tried building it. It required a newer version of uh, Mono than I had because they needed an updated version of Mono build. I didn't decide. I decided to not fuck around with my systems mono uh but if you download the if you download the uh, binary it does work it runs i have no idea what i'm doing though i successfully launched my ship off mars and i flew around for a hot second and i'm like man i need to actually spend some time with this game there's like a lot of depth to it uh that that's sort of where the uh that's sort of where the uh privateer comparison comes in because you can do sp- base piracy you can do resource mining there's diplomacy they just they recently added uh combat missions and beam lasers because apparently there are other types of lasers other than beam lasers i'm not sure what they are maybe maybe they're mayonnaise lasers who knows <laughs> um there's there's uh there's a couple more um release notes there you can read them yourself i believe in you these I think people are diametrically opposed to screenshots um, they really, oh, yeah. they really that are. Might help. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, lady. That's what I've been doing for the past what minute and a half is. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. took and, me a while to actually find them. <laughs> yeah. The um the other the other thing, and I can't believe I have to say this, but credit is credit credit where credit is due. They actually know how to ship a tarball with appropriate permissions, so you don't mm-hmm. have to ch mod plus x anything. You'd be surprised how big of an ask this actually is. So good on you, Pioneer, for knowing how Unix permissions work. Congratulations. I'm kind of with Jordan on this. Uh, everything launched. No issues. I didn't have to do anything. CH mod was not part of my story. It did start in like the like window res of like 1300 or something. Yeah. Yeah. The, weird. Itty bitty one. Uh, kind of like with you. I tried to play it. I was like, okay, let's try this. Huh? Give it a shot. This is definitely one of those games where you need to read the fucking RTFM on this thing before even thinking about it because you start to ship... And of course, you're like, I'm, I can figure this out. I've been gaming for three decades. No, you can't. No yeah, idea but, what's going on. Is it F3 for throttle? Microsoft uh, no, uh, Flight you, Simulator? You, you actually, in, in, in order to release the docking clamps, you actually had to go to the station and request launch permission. I managed to get on the dock that I like flew into the sky a little bit, and I was like, "Yeah, this isn't going anywhere." <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, there's like so there's so much depth, and this is like one of those games that the people who are super into this, this is the game that they play. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if, if and you're not willing is, to approach it from that perspective, then you're probably not going to have a good time. Like the uh, the announcement was made on Space Sim Central, so they know exactly who their audience is. Yeah. Hey, yeah, ba- basically I was that dog that Ven posted in Discord. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I have idea no idea what I'm, what I'm doing. <laughs> Dark mod. Love it, baby. Uh based on the Quake 3? What was it? Dune no, Dune 3. 3. Doom Doom 3. 3. Hey man, I, I can dream. Uh, Dark Mod 2.0 7 is available. It's thing. It's Thief, man. Let's be honest. That's what it is. And it's been an interesting project to follow since, man, before we really had any decent games on Linux. And it's still quite interesting. This, uh, I, I think the big thing we need to point out with the new version is you can no longer play it on windows xp because that's still a thing and i I (laughs) giggle uh one thing i will say you download a script which in turn downloads the game motherfuckers change the timeout because this thing was like trying to get a hold of servers in zanzibar and shit and failing (laughs) took like 45 minutes to download 3.5 gigs that's a minute when your average download speeds between five and 800. Uh, what I will say about this and Pedro will follow up on it is, do you know, those feels like back in the day, you know, you'd launch the executable and you're like, Hey man, I don't play with this. And all three or all, however many monitors just put that in, plug that variable in, just go completely dark lights out. And I'm like, okay, th- this is going to be a fun adventure. You're always in void. <laughs> Because you're like, ah, uh, um, Alt F2, what's going on? Can I get Alt F7? Oh, look, one monitor came back. And of course, it's the one in portrait mode. And it's some weird fucky 640 resolution where nothing, I have to scroll miles to get to one thing. And if I can't open it, the save button. The save dialog's bigger than the monitor. 
Those feels. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that SDL 1.2 life. Yeah, Ladies no, and gentlemen, I got the... a. Um... <laughs> Jesus, you Portuguese asshole. Let me finish my sentence. Um... <laughs> Come on. Uh, I'm just going to say, needless to say, my testing session with this came to an end right then because I, I had unsaved shit on my desktop. I managed to get it saved. But yeah, peaced out after that. I'm like, nope. Yeah, that's uh, Doom 3, the OG Doom 3 uh, release we had on Linux and most of the first um, source ports that we had for Doom 3, they all had that behavior because, yeah, it's SDL 1.2. You, it, oh, is it full screen? Okay, then you only need this monitor at whatever this resolution is and F everything else. It's like, fuck you, bye, see ya. And it, it, it's fucking annoying, which actually makes me appreciate Doom and all the newer um, Doom 3 source ports because, hey, they actually respect your uh, monitor configs. If it was a like, very authentic Doom 3, you'd have to type in that fucky Pulse Audio also. <laughs> oh, yeah. P-A-C-M-D. I mean, so... P-A-D-S-T so, uh, or P-C-D or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so going going through the change logs, there's actually a couple Linux specific fixes in here. Uh, the big announcement, though, is that uh, the next version, because this is 2.07, uh, 2.08 is going to be ditching OpenGL uh, 2.0 for uh, 3.3. So that's going to piss some people off in 32-bit land. I'm curious, though, if eventually someone's going to get around to sliding a Vulkan render in there. Because, I mean, they did it with ID Tech 2 and ID Tech 1. Got it. Might as well just go back and make sure all the dooms and all, all the quakes do the Vulcans. You know, yeah. we, we don't see a lot of love for that particular engine because everyone who's ever cracked it open went, oh, fuck that. Nah, <laughs> that, that, that was peak Carmack. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you, you know, what? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's someone there who's like reading through the Doom 3 source code. They're like, I get it. I understand. I am the one. <laughs> I get this. <laughs> like Joffrey's out girl. of the fucking window. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Borrow trauma, aka lovers in a dangerous submarine. Um, so th- this, this is a this is a multiplayer game uh, where you, a bunch of you are trapped in a submarine that is flooding, and you need to survive because horrible crab monsters and lobsters are trying to kill you, as well as a bunch of other undersea monstrosities. Um, they're about to start a Kickstarter. Uh, Kickstarter. Uh, they're going to into early access. They do have a playable Linux demo though, and mm-hmm. it does run. Um, I have no, I couldn't get doors to open. Apparently the E button wasn't a hundred percent there. Huh. Um, it does have online multiplayer though. So again, it, pa- it passes the litmus test of, do you expect your game to be played with more than one person? Cool. Nope. It should have online multiplayer. <laughs> so this might be fun for uh, some <laughs> after show stuff. See if we can all drown each other or see who can drown each yeah. other the fastest. Pedro was your, did you, did you play Pedro? I didn't actually play it. Right, I saw you're that dead very to be Jordan, trailer since you actually it. played it. Um, <laughs> do you remember that space game where you, you Starbound? No, the astronaut suit that had the marionette physics really reminded me of that. Hey, who oh, turned out the yeah, lights? the fall. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. The physics really reminded me of that, and the door opening thing threw me off because it's not the door that you activated; it was the little tiny microscopic fuck you button. Near the door ah, that you that, had to that's what threw me off. pixel I figure over that just right. <laughs> then you had to hit E. Then you could get in. Uh, okay. Yeah. After after you get through that, don't worry though, because you'll get stuck in this damn sonar menu screen that there's no fucking way out of. Uh, I kind of hope the character <laughs> control scheme is also alpha because it's a bit sharp. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean that that's kind of the point of early access is to get it out in the open and hammer out those kinks. So hopefully they'll do that, and hopefully this. Go ahead, Pedro. <laughs> no, it's uh they they do say it has uh multiplayer and they say it's like you can cooperate or you can actively try to sabotage just about everything. And yeah, I'm imagining us just attempting to play this game and uh it just devolving into who's gonna kill everyone else first. That that, that <laughs> that's the content though, Pedro. That is why anyone would be watching a given stream of us playing this in the first I don't know. Place. I think Strider might have a point, man. It's underwater co-op. Yeah. yeah co-op <laughs> and I'm gonna have the same problem playing this for any amount of time that I did when I watched uh, uh C Man was uh 
Aquaman. I was like singing the crab people song the entire time. I couldn't help myself. It was the back. Was like, <laughs> like talk, crab, talk, talk like, talk people. like people. Right. <laughs> uh, true story. True story. Um, DCSS. What is it? Ever heard yes. Of? So it's Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. If you've never heard of this, it is a, an online dungeon crawler which you can also play offline if you so decide it you can also play it through a terminal you can just ssh into one of the running servers and play it directly right there on your terminal it uh, version not 0.23 is out they say that they've overhauled the trap system there's a new gauntlet portal to replace the labyrinths uh there's a complete revision of whatever the hell a nemelex shoba is and uh, there are nine certified pre-owned refreshed underrun darts uh, which I have no idea what they are either, but hey, they have also improved the UI, they've refreshed some of the monsters, and they made a ton of smaller changes, which you can find in the changelog. It's it's a, yeah, it's uh, an old-style uh, dungeon crawler. Imagine... Yeah, I mean, if, if NetHack isn't hardcore enough for you, you're playing Dungeon Crawl slow, Stone Soup. Yep. Or, yeah. or Dwarf Fortress, <laughs> but yeah. That, or Dwarf that, Fortress, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, the, the thing that it has over NetHack is that, yes, you can actually have sprites on screen rather than just the uh, uh, ASCII Vulture's characters. Vulture's Eye and Vulture's Claw would like to have a word with you, Pedro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know, it's like the fact that this is online, man, but mm -hmm. hey, they got everything worked together, and this is like NetHack with the, uh, somebody make a, made some graphics oh. to Tal, yeah, Tal said. I, I wonder though, can you play this over Telnet though? Because NetHack still has that going for it. I don't. Uh, they had no. I think SSH and a couple others, but I don't think Telnet's one yeah, of them. Yeah, there, 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 there are still a couple public Telnet uh, NetHack servers that you can just connect to and like the online reports. muds, man. I have oh, a no, you can. friend that definitely oh, no. Telnet and WebSocket. And... Uh, WebSocket. Yeah. <laughs> kind of missed out on the entire genre. I, I tried it, but it's like no. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was some pixel art over it. Maybe, maybe it, it, it. it's great if you want to like pretend that you're working in a terminal and actually playing games oh. yes <laughs> all right <laughs> just disable the colors because if you have the the colors in the terminal enabled you it's like that's very colorful oh no what are you doing <laughs> that, that's why you use the uh, website that makes reddit look like um javascript yes yeah. <laughs> facebook <laughs> wrong type of javascript <laughs> Right, right. This comes from ZDNet. All this business is going to be in our show notes, as always. Oh, God, um, the videos. The videos! Oh, nope. Uh, I, I finally, like, have it, tracked it, it, it's, down it's and murdered every single element that tries. And it tries hard, too. It, it won't give up completely. But <laughs> what are we talking about? Right what I talked about at the beginning of the show. The Zonreason 9400, the ultimate Linux gaming PC. Who wrote this? Stephen J. Vaughn. He throws yeah, a lot Steam, of Yeah, Steamy Vaughn. Steamy Ray Vaughn. So, what do we got? Uh, well, the base system, you're talking about uh, 1050 spinning glass drives, 8 gigajoules of memory RAM. That might possibly work as a 2D retro console for the low, low price of $799. I don't know about that, Pedro. No, no, that's uh, that's a bit too much because for 800 bucks, you can double the RAM, triple the threat count, put a 1060 with three gigabytes in it, and granted, at that point, you're limited to one terabyte of uh, SATA SSDs, yes, and a 500 watt uh, any plus uh, bronze power supply, but yeah, that's a much better PC for just about everything else. Except maybe gaming, because that Pentium quad core that they have there, the um, the single thread performance will probably beat the Ryzen 5 2600, but that 2600 will curb anything else you throw at it. So it's here, just that here, here, thing, single thread performance. Here, here, <laughs> here, here is my lukewarm defense for this, because <laughs> you can always, 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 always build a better performing cheaper pc than anything you can buy from a prefab system no you can period line to people period <laughs> nope so here, here here's the thing the people who would actually go out and buy these systems are not people like us who know better so at that point it's good to see that there are more vendors at least offering linux as an option i just wanted in a little drop down when you when, when when you it gives you select your operating system do you want windows or do you want linux and we don't you don't have to pay for the license i can't hear you i'm too busy building my laptop 
<laughs> I mean, that. I mean, I, listen, if, 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 if that's all you want, then go f- good for you. The, uh, but like like I said, all, all all I'm happy to see is that more vendors are actually giving people the option to have Linux installed. No, this is this is why it's newsworthy, it. man. I mean, there yeah. this is going to ship with uh, Ubuntu's on it, which I'm down with. Now, Pedro, you're bringing up the price. Yeah, that that's a markup. Even when you're talking about like, I I use System76 as an example. They're like, oh, that's a bit of a markup. Yeah, but you know you're getting support. You are. Yeah. That's what you're paying for with this. I mean, build quality. Is a lot better with the system. I mean, if you're getting a desktop, thumbs up. I mean, good job on that. And their laptops have gotten better too. But one has to imagine was our reason. Uh, if you call them up for support, they're going to give you a blank stare. Now, I don't know how you deliver a blank stare over the telly, but they're going to find a way. And FaceTime, the, man. Not going to get a refund. <laughs> now, the top of the range, the, the one that actually would play all the 3D games, the Gamer Box 9400s, 2200 fuck you dollars, though. Oh yeah, is it actually called the Gamer Box? It's That's called terrible. The Gamer Box, man. That's terrible. No, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, no. I actually left a link to the you're too old, PC man. You're not hit. List That's what the <laughs> of that build that I put together for just eight hundred bucks. Uh-huh. So click on it. Don't. Yeah. It, it's a pager box. You want a stone box? <laughs> it curbs whatever the I, hell I'm, that I'm is. Just gonna, I'm just gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> Goodbye, folks. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, no, listen, the line, the, it's a stone box, the sarcophagus <laughs> line. Yeah. <laughs> Will you be my mummy? Ben yeah. uh, Cromlick right, Stone. Go to the All right, coming up next. It's taking us forever to get to this point, but we're finally throwing chairs at Dead Souls. Oh my god, it's the chair acquisition. This is the part of the show where we take a game and we talk about it. We tell you if it launches and how it performs and what the graphics are like and what the controls like. So, Ven, did you have fun playing this hipster pixel nonsense? Let's talk about it. Permadeath uh, came about basically due to the tech limitations of the day. It was not a design choice. You say differently, you're just wrong. But hey, we can both live with that. Uh, I'm two hours in, yeah. Turns out, guess what? Permadeath, simply not fun for me in 2019. The second time I effectively angered the girds in this game, I had to kill 10 baddies without getting touched by an angel. I kind of noped out. You know, I could get good, but throwing that RNG bullshit into this game really called me, you know, caused me to just calmly exit and uninstalled it. And that's a damn shame. It's a really big damn shame. I was having a good time learning the mechanics, uh, playing with the power ups. Hell, I was even enjoying the hipster pixel done right graphics in this and. Double so the soundtrack. I mean, the soundtrack by itself should get its own little mention. It is so well done. However, I got to be honest with this, 100%. I mean, if you don't like uh, RNG-flavored permadeath, do yourself a favor with this and just kind of stay away because it's procedurally generated. And even if you do manage to get good, it will throw you that extra fuck you bone right into your shins, into your face, and you'll get killed. Sometimes you get really lucky, and you think you're getting good. You get a good run, and boom, you're right back. They have released a mode later on that is unlockable to where you can kind of do your loadout and stuff like that. Mm, it's not my jam. I'm going to say if you got 20 bucks burning a hole in your wallet, and you want your Metroidvania without the permadeath, maybe go check out Axiom Verge. So, yeah, not my jam. One jam. Yeah, um, so Dungeons and Dragons has spent 20 odd years teaching me about permadeath. You're always one bad roll, a silly mistake, or one silly mistake you didn't really consider in the moment, or even just a careless finger away from uh, death and destruction and misery. And if you're anything like me, you will be forever chasing that fucking dragon of the perfect run. My God, the, re- the reason this works is because if I if I went to a casino, I would be a very, very poor man. Instead, I gamble with hit points and souls or cells whatever the hell these things are called um and uh, yeah if you throw that all on top of a pretty good metroidvania chassis and you have yourself dead cells um and i'm not usually very good at these sorts of games um anything that sort of requires me to keep track of a bunch of little things on the screen at once and sort of plan in real time is something i struggle with just because of my add um but i didn't really feel frustrated with this game very it's very much like oh no i i put myself in this situation i clearly should have known better 
Um, and yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm muddling my way through it. I'm still trying to work my way to figuring out the first boss. I got pretty close though, just by baiting and juking him and letting some damage over time <laughs> trap whittle him down to about a third of his hit points. Um, yeah, um, the character designs are very, very good. Uh, I, I like, I like the sort of, despite the fact that the, the main character has no head, I really like his mugging when he's just kind of. <laughs> trying to like communicate stuff to other people or just to you as, as the player. Um, and yeah, the soundtrack is very good. Um, definitely deserves a mention as Ven said. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed this game. Um, probably going to play more of it. It's nice because like usually my runs end at about the 30 to 45 minute mark when I die. Cause I made some stupid mistake and that's pretty good. Cause then I can walk away, come back. And I mean, it saves in place too. So it's not one of those things where if you exit in the middle of the game, your run is just gone. So I'll give it three chairs. I enjoyed this. And it's, it's so nice to play a game on Linux Gamecast that doesn't suck for once. Yeah. It's actually a really, uh, good game, which could be better. But there is something to be said about the uh, random nature of, uh, roguelikes and roguelites in general. Uh, in more than a couple of runs, I was basically doomed from the start because I just didn't get the weapons that I liked. I really liked the uh, greatsword style of weapon, and I just didn't get it at all. None of the shops were selling it. I didn't find it in any of the drops. It's like, okay, so I guess I'm just stuck with this crappy little sword or the crappy little bow. So uh, I would like to at least be able to pick a starting weapon but no it's it's either a random uh melee weapon or it's just the crappy little sword that you start the game with uh i do however enjoy this game very much i would enjoy it more if i could sit on the couch with the steambox 360 and the steam controller and have at it but uh not unless i play it with proton with the proton button uh it's as it stands it's doubly broken if you're looking for that particular kind of experience like i am i mentioned before it's like if you have a hipster pixel platformer and you're releasing it in um, current day argument well then you need to do be you you need to be doing something different uh you need to uh take something that no one's ever done before or combine elements from different genres do something here they didn't do that so much as they took certain elements from games that already did this like salt and sanctuary with the dark souls elements and uh the rogue legacy style of progression and the basically how you go about with the game itself yeah it's it's rogue legacy but much more fast uh much more fast paced and you have the different weapons with the different attack uh animations and you have to account for that for the enemies that's all really nice and it is a really great and fun experience but it could be an awesome one if it worked properly on linux so it only gets three chairs from me yeah, I'm going to have to double down with this game was pretty popular, right? It sold pretty well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The I know for a fact you can go to their forums. You can look in the Steam forums. The developers said, we're going to look into this Steam issue on Linux with the overlay not working with the controllers and stuff back in October of last year. Mm-hmm. They haven't done mm. fuck about it. So Yeah, and the SteamOS version was even longer than that. It's been there since May Right. <laughs> this is definitely a thing, and it's not like this is a five dollar game either. Thank you, Arthur. He sent me a copy for this. He's kind of responsible for um provocation yeah. <laughs> of this. One thing I want to say with the this is I, I was willing to give permit out the try. You know, I don't like to walk into anything and go, you know, I just fuck this, fuck this. I'm not gonna it's like no. Maybe I can make this work. And you know what? I actually managed to make it work for a little bit. Because I just had to do a reset of, you know, NES days way back when of, okay, there's no save here. So I just get, I got to be cautious. I got to play. I get one playthrough. If I fuck up, I got to start over. I could, I got myself in that mindset and I was like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Levels are a little different, but I can manage. And I, I was feeling good about it right up until it hit me with the bullshit of okay now it's extra hard mode if you get touched you die and I'm like no mm-mm. don't, don't dig open that. the curse yeah, chest I'm, just don't <laughs> yeah i'm 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 cool with like the having the luck skill ratio balance just because it allows me to suck it gives me it gives me an opportunity to suck a little bit more and 
allow the game to maybe hold my hand a little bit uh, if I get a good run. But you know what? It's not it's not a thing for everyone. Um, some people just don't like permadeath. And I mean, these days it is a design decision. Yeah, it was technical limitation back in the day. Now, that's just the thing. I don't know. If, rogue, if roguelikes are your thing, you'll probably be into it. If you're like Venn and you don't like um, permadeath and you want to be able to just grind that one part. Um, yeah, I kind I kind of wish they did the rogue legacy thing and gave you the option to sort of lock the seed a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is it is what it is. It's it's a design decision. You don't necessarily have to like it. Um, because you don't have to like all games. Surprise, surprise. Uh, mm -hmm. any, anything else we gotta say before That's we uh, go on to the hate mail section? Nope. All right, cool. Coming up next, we decide we discover what happens when Pedro mucks around with his modem. And it's about time we wrap this up. So let's say my dues. Yes. Uh, you heard us say something that was completely off base and you want to, well, actually us, uh, you can do that very easily by going over to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill out the form and you pick LGC weekly from the choosy box. I didn't say a little. <laughs> no, you uh, fucked up and... far more egregiously earlier in your speech <laughs> that I just let you have. Um, actually, you can also ask me for relationship advice. <laughs> yes, you can ask Jordan for relationship advice if you'd like. If you're a game developer and you'd like to, uh, you know, send us your game so we can play around with it, make sure to include three keys or a uh, build that we can share amongst all of us. Otherwise, we will just make fun of you. And trust me, you don't want that. Yeah, maybe uh, they do, man. All publicity is good. you do. Yep. <laughs> yeah, 100%. If you're crowdfunding, man, make just... Get a demo, man. Put a demo out. Yeah. Don't bother with us. That's brilliant. If you don't, I mean, there's plenty of like regurgitation outlets that'll just say, hey, come to our web zone, whatever. We got a curator. Curator. I like that. Curator, curator. page on Steam. If you want to do that nonsense, we're there. We got like almost 900 people following our curation list. It's brilliant. And um, yeah. Hey, we'd love to have you on the show at some point. Maybe you want to actually be one of those rare people who's like, I will communicate with other human being. Uh, Send us a note. Also, don't copy pasta press release or you'll trigger the spam golem. And we don't mm -hmm. like that because that motherfucker's all teeth and nails. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> That's what you get for using Jewish automata. Anyways, uh, we, 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 got, we got some... We, Pedro, Pedro said something. I that just got to stop and week. say um, as Jewish. Aye. He can yes. say that. <laughs> so, fuck off. The, 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 the golem is technically Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Tec technically, they, 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 hate, they hate spam and pork based products. Uh, anyways, Apparently. so uh, Pedro said something last week that uh, this that Marsan didn't like. He says, Most ISP provided routers can be configured to work in modem mode, Pedro. Then you use your <laughs> own open DD, whatever WRT box, however you like. Cheers, die on a fire. So, listen, listen, it's illegal in Britain, it's not allowed. If Pedro did it, the queen would bust through his door and whoop his buns. <laughs> Actually, uh, my uh, previous router didn't have that option, but this uh, particular version, Hub 3, does hey, have on, modem tap, mode. Tap, 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 tap. The fuck did you say last week? I don't ever pay any attention. Uh, it was Pedro's about the... Talking about... Yeah. Go on, yes, go the DD WRTs. The, what? <laughs> Well, I don't remember the exact context, but I remember... You, 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 you were saying you can't use DDWRT because your router doesn't allow it. Yeah, because you're because because it's 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 locked down. Yeah, but, it's it's the Virgin router, and what Marson is saying, or Marson, or he's a new Marson. patron. So, <laughs> dude, I mean, uh, listen, if it if your router has a switch, I mean, it'll be like baby Jesus. <laughs> if, if, if if your router has a switch, you can stick it on top of your rack or on the bottom of the rack. It can I'm just saying, this listen, one... what, if you got a Virgin router, keep it away from Romans. It might get preggers. <laughs> <laughs> they might try to kill it and bathe I'll in its blood. <laughs> but no, th this one actually does. And basically, yeah, it just loses all uh, router functionality. It's like, nope, it's just a modem now. And you plug it into your own modem. And yeah, it's uh, it's just that any decent Pedro, router. Are, are, you, the, are you just saying that you can put it in bridge mode with a bunch of extra words? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you look. <laughs> oh, oh no, Pedro, your buttons. They're, it's they're just that I have to then buy a separate router, which is expensive. 
I will send you. What do you want? What kind do you want? Yeah, how, how many of those do you have on your walls. desk, Ben? <laughs> what, like the tech closet. I, there's a bunch of shit that uh, audio equipment that I, I need to send Pedro, but he won't accept it. And so I'm thinking I could sneak that in. It's like putting medicine in <laughs> that cheese. That could work, yes. With, with, with some food chip erasers. Right. <laughs> I'm not in Portugal anymore, so you can send all the food chip erasers. But they will be poisoned. <laughs> Think it, think it two steps ahead. All right. Hi yeah, there, UK Postal Service. Ignore what I've meant to say. Hi, Hi, MI5. How's it going? <laughs> haven't met you guys yet. Goal. Goal to uh, cot? Run. Why are new games being released with OpenGL and not Vulcan? Question mark. Fair question. Sorry if this is too... No, that's not a dumb question. Uh, the- Jordan. <laughs> Okay, sure. Yeah, um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of engines still uh, only provide a lot of automation and a lot of click and drag stuff using OpenGL. Um, Vulkan um, is being implemented in stuff like Unity and Unreal Engine, but it does require quite a bit of boilerplating to be done from the outset. You need to actually build your graphics stack up, and to be honest, um, you need to have a lot of low-level programming experience that I don't think a lot of game developers have, which is why we start seeing fucky Vulcan implementations and you start seeing a lot of the better quality ones coming out of open source projects where you have more people learning and continuously improving over time as mm-hmm. opposed to say a product like unity or Godot or um or unreal that has to provide something that people can use for better or for worse do you have any thoughts pedro uh, no, yeah, you don't. it's all, right, all that's about brilliant. the automation so, <laughs> i want to say this man i think for better or worse you know, Unity, Ghetto, Unreal, and the like have enabled game designers and artists to play developer. I mean, unpopular opinion. I mean, what you kind of waiting on. And gross overgeneralization, not really. I'm just saying that to cover my ass a little bit. Um, what we're waiting on is Vulcan buttons. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Unity is definitely working towards Vulcan buttons. Kind of like, what worries me a little bit is their Linux ports are the open, the equivalent of OpenGL buttons. And if you, sometimes you get lucky, most of the time you don't. You're like, how is this running so bad? How many <laughs> times have we said that, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I know, I know some of y'all are going to get a little angry at me because I'm right. But I think it's a, good thing in a way because not everyone wants to be developer person they want they have an idea and they want to bring it into the world and those tools allow it it's just they're not quite there yet for like i would say somebody in my skill set man i'm definitely not a developer i'm stack exchange man um (laughs) But they, I, I, I would risk going, I wouldn't even fuck around with Unreal Engine. I mean, outside of building the damn thing, uh, I'd play around with Unity, try to make a game, simple game. Yeah, and, and I mean, to like some extent, you're right, Ven. Um, it, it's, it's a good thing because it allows designers, it allows people who don't necessarily have the programming exposure to at least contribute, to at least toy around. And I think one, one thing that a lot of software development teams just speaking as someone who works operations and devops one of the biggest problems is uh cross functionality and literacy you have people who are siloed in their little department and they're not speaking the same language so having tools that all that sort of bridge that communication gap like unity like Godot, like unreal are super crucial especially for small teams that may not have that may not be entirely raptor bus proof and it's also yeah. a good way to start with, like, say, your skill set is art or design. It, it's a good way to get into actual programming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm? And and I mean, yeah. like, and, you know, as time goes on, visual programming paradigms will become just as performant as raw written ones. Because, you know, not, you're, you're not writing assembly and you're not writing inline assembly in your C. You're writing C code and then it gets, you know, compiled to assembly, right? Coming so. in 2020, Unity <laughs> game blocks. Hey, if, it, oh. if, 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 if listen, if they can get it to a point where it works and it's reasonably performant, I don't see a problem with this. But Powered yeah, by it, lo- it lowers barrier for, of entry <laughs> and Cortana. allows more people to make more games. That's a good thing. And Vulcan, the thing with Vulcan is it's so low level that you really want to fine tune it exactly for the game you're creating, for the shaders that you're using, for the type of textures that you're using, for 
just about everything you have that granular control and yes you can write a generalized renderer path that will work for generic renderers that unity supports out of the box or unreal supports out of the box you can do that but any other customization that you do on top of that it's just not going to work very well a lot of people are digging vulcan though man i mean that yeah that's the thing i'm going to say in the like even remotely there's three Dude behind DXVK knows the fuck out of it. Oh, yeah. Crow Team knows the fuck out of it. Crow Team with Feral the has done a very impressive job with it as well. Um, yeah. Beth- Bethesda, for better or for worse. Look at, look at, uh, look at Doom. Well, it look did. at, look at, look at, yes, they own, they own it. It's, it's the same fucking company. Well, you, why did uh, you say Zenimax, Bethesda? Yeah, Zenimax. Zenimax owns them all. Yeah, our, yes. Zenimax, sure. I, I, I fucked up. I'll, 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 I'll eat my shoe. Where, where's my shoe? Put it in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, hey, man, but... Scott kicks in. He's like, yo, performance not the big of an issue. With visual scripting, it's the complex logic that turns into an illegible mess. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. That's fair point. But that, that can only get better over time. Hmm. People continue to use it. Better tools. It. Hey, you know what? I'm glad something can get better over time. Because fuck all if we can. And on that <laughs> oh, yeah, tr- train wreck week after week. Let's do the music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. That's where this nightmare train pulls off the rails. And back on it, then back off even harder. It's brilliant. Thanks, everyone, for showing up live. For listening to us after the fact. Uh, show up next week. Come say hi. Uh, if you want to get hold of me, it's just at Vin Stone or um, at Vin. Well, at Vin Stone on the Twitters. Uh, at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Com. Yeah, I may not be off the rails, but I'm certainly off the lag. And you can find my random retweets at the Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus until March seventh, and occasionally, at least for stream announcements, at Projo at Mastalnextgamecast.com. Yeah, just just follow me on Twitter. It's that unaccounted for. It's that thing that's showing up like right here ish. Yeah, just follow that on Twitter. That's where no, I'm at. Geez, I gotta make a new one. <laughs> you, should, you should just start moving it around while he's trying to find it. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, that's the place to find me. So, yeah, Let, let's look at some LWDW credits, maybe. Sweet. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> you, and, and stare at my stare at my chest. Why are they only over there? You want you? Oh, because yes. you, you, you know, I'm going to put an overlay over this because I just like, shit, I to do that. cover that shit up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's what I forgot. Now mm-hmm. I remember. Well, okay. it's, it's, uh, North Ranger brought up the uh, DX12 button. Yeah, DX12 tried to do the low level thing at as high a level as possibly could, and it failed miserably. Obviously, man. <laughs> I mean, there, there are actually a couple of projects that are trying to like implement sort of higher level APIs on top of Vulkan. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not just the OpenGL one, but there was there was another one we covered uh, like last year, I think. Hey, defeating the purpose. <laughs> I, I, I mean, at, at, at the same time, on. not re- not really, because at the very least, like Vulcan will be in the future, at least will be more ubiquitous than say OpenGL, right? So, five dudes. <laughs>